Praise the Lord. Good morning and welcome to the Sunrise with Jesus. Friends, how long did God take for creation? Answer A, seven days. You're wrong. Answer B, six days because remember God rested on the seventh day? Well, you're wrong again. Answer C and hold on. You will exactly come to know how long God took for creation. Friends, when we pray the apostolic creed, we begin saying, I believe in God, the Father Almighty Creator. The identity of God as Creator is very central to our faith. Now, who is a Creator? Someone who's like an inventor, or like an author. So the author creates a book. He brings it out of nothing. Of course, he has a pen and a paper or whatever digital device we use today. But the author creates a story. And after he writes everything, there is a publisher who then improvises it and packages it. Similarly, an inventor. So the inventor inv invents, say, a, an iPad or some other digital device. And then there is a company, an industry that takes up this invention and packages it and markets it. Now, very often we imagine that God is the inventor of our first parents, Adam and Eve. God created them and then the rest of us are the improvisations. Well, that's a very great misconception. It is true that God created Adam and Eve. But every successive generation, for that matter, every human person is created afresh by God. Like God could, took the dust of the earth and breathed the spirit of God into that dust and raised up the crown of creation, the human person. God does use some basic matter and breathes his life and creates in each person a new creation and this explains why every human person is unique no two persons are totally alike no human person is an improvisation of someone else and there is no rule that that binds every human person did you know there are even human beings who do not have a thumbprint well this goes on to reveal to us that God's creation work continues till this day. Moreover, we have to look at scripture to understand that God did not just create us at the very beginning, bringing us into existence, giving us life. But in fact, God remains in our life with a promise. In Revelations chapter 21 verse 5, God says, Behold, I make all things new and all things means everything that exists you and me today God is ready and God is all set to renew us day after day this is the God we have he has not finished with us there's a beautiful song that says he's still working on me to make me what I ought to be and we have this glorious promise every morning. Friends, this morning, God is waiting to tell you that He is a God who's ready to do a new thing with your life. In the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, the Word of God says, If anyone is in Christ, he becomes a new creation. The old is past, the new has come. And this is God's promise for every one of us. If we allow ourselves to be back in the hands of God, He will make us a new creation and our lives will not be controlled by the patterns of the past. Our lives will not be controlled by the powers of the past. Yes. God will make us absolutely new with a new power, a new future, a new hope, an untainted new zeal for holiness. 
And friends, this just means that you and I are not slaves to habits. The habits of the past, the fears that controlled our thinking, the desires, perhaps the negative addictions that control our hearts, the bitterness, all these no more will have control over us. Moreover, no matter what anyone has done against us, we must know nothing, nothing in the past can control our lives. God in setting us free from the past leads us to a place where we have absolutely new power, a new future and a new hope. And friends, that is why we need to look at the scripture. There's something marvelous about the Bible. The Bible does give us the truth and it gives us the unfiltered truth. It never glosses over the truth. When it presents us the heroes of the history of salvation, they are presented to us with all their failures, with all their mistakes, with all their warts and their moles, so that we understand that they are not supernatural beings. Moreover, we come to understand the great and unlimited hope that we have in a God who will make us a new creation. In Exodus chapter 3, God presents to us a man who has no past, who has no future, whose life has come to a grinding halt, whose dreams have turned into ashes and those ashes have been swept away by the wind. A man who has nothing in life, a man whom we know as Moses. Friends, when we look at Moses and that moment when God comes to encounter him, he's a man who has nothing to claim for, no achievement for his past, no great hope for his future. And he presently is a man who is basically a nobody having nothing to call his own because he is presented to us as grazing the flock of his father-in-law. In fact, Bible scholars tell us at this time when he encounters God in the burning bush and his life is transformed forever, he is already around 76, where for over four to five decades, he is working for his father-in-law. He has made no achievement at all with his life. Friends, today we want to look at the life of Moses. Moses, it seems, was born to be persecuted. He's born at the wrong time in history. A time when there is a, an evil, oppressive and powerful government that is carrying out a genocide. All the male children, the Hebrew male children are being ruthlessly massacred and Moses' mother, a woman of a certain courage and creativity, she takes this risk to put her baby, her newborn son in a basket and sets him on the river Nile. Now we do not know if it was a wind or we do not know if it was the clever working of the mother herself. But what we really know is there was the hand of God in that this basket with a little baby on the Nile is led to the palace of the princess. And the princess takes him over and now this baby, the persecuted, becomes a prince. He's raised up in the palace, trained to be a contender for the throne. But we know most probably he never was a contender because he was a stammerer. Most probably there was a deep hurt and bitterness burning in his heart for he was a man who was marked as impulsive. On one fine day, he has a sudden fellow feeling for the Hebrews and he goes and strikes down an Egyptian. And for this, he would have to begin to flee again. The prince becomes the persecuted once again. He goes rushing out of Egypt and hides as a fugitive in the land of the Midians. And now we see Moses has had a complete cycle from being persecuted to being a prince and from being a prince to becoming persecuted again. 
he is hiding in fear, hiding with a sense that there is nothing left for him in life. It is at this time that God embarks Moses on an absolutely tremendous mission, such a great mission that Moses is known as a forerunner of Jesus. He's known as a forerunner of Jesus because like Jesus came to save the world, Moses will now be the savior, of course, an instrument of God, but he will be leading the people of Israel who were under four centuries of slavery, leading them from the land of slavery to the promised land. This is the tremendous and true story of Moses, a man who for 50 years was a nobody in a place called nowhere. Friends, when we look at the way God works, not just on the first seven days of creation, but right through every day in the history of salvation, right through every life in the history of salvation, you and I today, we can take confidence that if we have reached a point where we realize we are nobodies, where we realize the past is controlling us beyond any help, where we are perhaps a slave of addictions, a slave of the terrors of the past, where all that we have are losses to recount, and where we realize in truth we don't have a future to look forward to, let the witness of Moses, who led the Israelites from the slavery of the Pharaoh to the promised land where God fulfills the promises that he is the father, that he is the almighty. Let the story of Moses lead you, lead you from the slavery of the past where we shall march into that land where every promise is fulfilled in Christ. Yes, if anyone, anyone is in Christ, he becomes a new creation. The old does not exist anymore. The new has come. I wish you a brand new blessed day where you and I can experience being created afresh. May a new joy fill your heart. May new visions guide your eyes. And may you be such a tremendous witness of hope to everyone who is around you. When Jesus speaks of the parable of the sower, he says the seed falls on four types of soil. And the first type of soil are those who hear the word of God but do not understand and the devil comes and steals the word away. So their lives continue remaining the same. But the fourth type of soil, the fertile soil, is that person who hears the word of God, understands and brings forth fruit 30, 60, 100 fold. So the whole thing that matters is, do you understand? You understand the English, there's no problem. But does something happen in your heart when you hear the word of God? Do you say, wow, wow, wow. I'm getting an answer to my problems. I'm getting a solution. And that only the Holy Spirit can do. So that when you hear the word, you, you, you chew on that word, you digest that word, you make that word part of your life and you are changed, you are transformed and you keep moving on with God. Otherwise, nothing happens. And this is very important. And it's always, when you read the Gospels, it is always the disciple. For example, when Jesus spoke about the parable of the sower, multitudes heard it. So they must have said, there's nothing great about this. We are all farmers. Most of us know about farming. Yeah, he's talking about seed and it falls on four, four types of soil. And they understood and they went away. 
but it was only the disciples who came to the master and said master what did you mean what were you trying to say to us in this parable and to them was given the understanding now what i'm going to teach you is something that came to me in prayer 3 years ago and it came so alive in my heart that i am doing it every day every day because and i heard, because i know how crucial this is how vital this is for me for my walk with god for me to live my christian life and that is how how crucial it is to every day surrender to the will of the father to the lordship of jesus and to the leading of the holy spirit you don't know how to sustain this grace how to build on this grace that god has poured into your heart if you will say these simple prayers faithfully daily you have to grow and you will grow i can't explain the prayers to you but i'll tell you what the prayers there's nothing very simple very basic the first thing is you come to abba father every day and you say to the father abba father as jesus taught us to pray abba father thy kingdom come thy will be done thy kingdom come thy will be done you have a plan for my life i want that plan i desire that plan i seek that plan because because you know sisters and brothers the will of god is your highest good there's nothing better you can will for your life pray for your life than the will of the father he's your daddy and which daddy doesn't want the best for his child and my daddy is pure unselfish so jesus taught us to pray and he says our father in heaven thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven on earth means in first in my life so you must seek that will you must yield to that will you must desire that will you must pray for that will you can't take that will for granted because unless you yield your will god cannot and will not work in your life he's given you the awesome freedom of your will so i said pray to the father then i'm sure as a good catholic so i don't know my mother nurtured me in prayer and she taught me especially at the elevation time eucharist when when the priest is consecrating the hose echo the words of saint thomas jesus my lord and my god my lord and my god my lord and my god so come daily to jesus and say jesus my lord and my god my lord and my god i surrender to you be my master be my good shepherd what does it mean to be a christian and jesus says in john 10:27 jesus says john 10:27 my sheep hear my voice i know them they follow me i have to follow jesus and if you take that scripture seriously if you take that scripture seriously really the, the only thing you must long for is to hear his voice because if you don't hear his voice you will hear the voice of our three enemies the world the flesh and the devil and you and you wound yourself you go astray so you pray sincerely and say jesus you're my shepherd my whole life depends on you teach me to hear your voice that i may follow you so in other words you're surrendering to jesus and allowing jesus to be the lord and master of your life that's christianity now you come to the holy spirit and you can't say anything more beautiful to the holy spirit than what mother mary said at the annunciation she says behold the handmaid of the lord be it done unto me according to thy word surrender to the holy spirit give him permission to work in your life and romans 8:14 will say romans 8:14 will say for all who are led by the spirit of god are the sons of god all those that are willing to be led are the sons of god you will mature into a woman of god into a man of god this should be your cry you will not come here just to be healed or to be comforted or whatever it is as important as it is but much more 
you're a son you're a daughter of god you have to live the life of a son of god a daughter of god that's an that's an amazing transformation that's a divine transformation only by the grace of god only by the holy spirit you can you can we can be transformed Allora ga a blessing to all around make us a blessing to all around. we begin this day worshiping and adoring you seeing you in the sacrament of the holy eucharist make us a blessing to all around let us speak every word do everything fulfill our responsibilities turn to everyone around us as a blessing that we may become a blessing to everyone around make us a blessing to all around hallelujah 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 praise you jesus thank you lord we bless you lord jesus in your holy presence we rejoice oh god Praise you I Jesus thank you Lord God. you have given us the grace of beholding your face at the beginning of this day your face in the holy eucharist is so dear to us your presence to us oh God thank you for being with us oh God you have come to us oh Lord in the holy bread in the sacred host praise you Jesus thank you Lord Jesus praise you Hallelujah hallelujah you, Lord, praise you Jesus Lord, thank you Lord Psalm 9 verses 1 and 2 I will praise you O Lord with all my heart I will declare all your wondrous deeds I will delight and rejoice in you I will sing hymns to your name most high a beautiful message for us today when is it that our life becomes a delight 
when is it that we are able to rejoice all the time our lives become a delight a rejoicing when we sing the praises of the lord worshiping and adoring him when we declare the marvelous things god has done for us and sing hymns to the lord when we live in his presence lord that is what we want to do today live in your presence we do not want to hide behind the tree as adam did we want we don't want to justify any sin as cain did we want to live in your presence everything we do today everything we say today shall be completely transparent to you o god a fulfillment of your will lord we surrender our life to you we place every moment of this day in your hands that we may always feel your presence your presence may be a tangible reality in our hearts in our lives lord accept our offering this morning we come to you to give you a life accept our heart accept our body accept our life accept ourselves completely that we may belong to you that we may live our day being sure that we belong to you that you belong to us that we are locked in an embrace of love united with you we want to live today accept our surrender oh god delight yourself in the lord he will give you your heart's desire commit your ways to the lord trust in him and he will bless your plan be still before the lord wait patiently for him trust in the lord and do good dwell in his holy land delight yourself in the lord he will give you your heart's desire commit your ways to the your ways and he will bless your plan and be still before the Lord wait patiently for him trust in the Lord and do good and dwell in his holy Jesus we trust in you too. We want to delight in your presence. We want to be sure we want to be sure that you will grant us the desires of our heart. We want to be sure that you will anoint us with the Holy Spirit. When your own presence and power is with us, we would be the most happy people. able to rejoice at every moment even when we could be hurt even when we could fail even when temptations could come our way even when someone could laugh at us in every such circumstance we will be able to rejoice because we know you love us your spirit is with us your spirit filling us with the joy 
heavenly joy and peace that no one can take away from us nothing can take away from us anoint us with your spirit o oh god let your holy spirit of joy and power and peace descend upon us and remain with us the whole day give us your spirit come holy spirit fall on me now i need your anointing come in your power i love you holy spirit you captivating my soul and every day i grow to love you more i'm reaching oh you have you hold my life in your hands drawing me closer to you i feel the power in you nothing compares to this place where i can see you face to face i worship you in spirit and in truth i worship you in spirit and in truth i worship you in spirit and in truth be sure i love you great sacrament most holy o sacrament divine all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine o sacrament most holy o sacrament divine all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine o sacrament most holy o sacrament divine all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine The Ministry of the Divine Retreat Center needs your support as they continue in their commitment to preach the good news of Jesus through the weekly retreats, the daily online and television ministry, through the service of 3000 disadvantaged persons, the mentally challenged, the aged the destitute women the sick and abandoned and economically disadvantaged families if you are inspired to share in this ministry through the sacred service of alms giving we invite you to send your love offering to divine charitable trust cd account number 04022318 00001 HDFC Bank Chalakudi branch IFSC code HDFC 0000402 and email the details to divine retreat center at gmail.com